Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, today I want to show you something I've been working on for a while now. This is the PMB, or Percussion Muzzle Loading Blunderbuss. Uh, I filmed the entire process of uh, building this, so I will be uploading a full build video once I can get around to editing down all that footage. But for today, I thought I would film sort of a demonstration and do a little bit more shooting with it and see what it's capable of. So first off, we'll come over to my stainless steel table here and set out the powder and shot and percussion caps to make sort of a loading station. The procedure for loading this is pretty similar to any other muzzle loading firearm. We'll start by putting some powder down the barrel. I use about 100 grains of Pyrodex for a typical shot. Next, I like to grease a little bit of wadding and ram that down the barrel to kind of seal things up and lubricate the barrel a little bit. And we'll just ram that down the barrel with our projectile insertion tool, otherwise known as a ramrod. Then put a 75 caliber round ball on top of it. Next we'll put this on half cock. There it is, and you see the hammer stops just short of contacting the end of that nipple. It's on half cock. So now, I can take a percussion cap, ease the hammer back just a little bit and slip that over the nipple. And then once it's in place, I can just manually use the hammer to push that forward onto the nipple, make sure it's seated. And yet the hammer still can't come forward far enough to set it off while it's on half cock. So now we're ready to fire. Uh, first off, let's shoot it over a chronograph and see what kind of velocities we're getting. Well, looks like our velocity is in the range of 1,200 to 1,300 feet per second, typically, with this load. Uh, so, supersonic, but just barely. Okay, so we fired a five shot group at 25 yards, and this is what we got. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five shots all accounted for. Uh, about a 10 inch group, although most of the variation is in the windage direction, and given that this doesn't have any sights, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it, I'm willing to say that a lot of that could be shooter error. So, considering that we're shooting a homemade blunderbuss, I'm going to say that's really pretty good accuracy with a uh, single round ball. Now let's see what it'll do with some buckshot loads. So that time I loaded it up with a small handful of 45 caliber round balls. Uh, I don't know if that would be 
uh, quadruple aught buck or something along those lines. Anyway, we got two holes on paper. I think that's a third one. And I have no idea where the rest of them went. So uh, at 25 yards, that load is probably marginally effective. You know, the pattern density is, is really pretty low. Uh, let's try a little bit smaller shot and see what happens. Okay, so that time I loaded it up with number four buckshot, uh, and now we have holes all over the target at 25 yards. Uh, fairly uniformly spaced, too. So, considering that each of those holes is basically equivalent to a 22 rimfire bullet, I'd say this could be a very effective load in certain applications. Uh, anyway, now let's try birdshot and see what happens. So with birdshot, again, we're getting a pretty reasonable pattern density at 25 yards. Uh, certainly this isn't going to be the ideal firearm for bird hunting, but it probably could be serviceable. So I must say, I'm really pleased with how this gun turned out. Uh, with the flared muzzle, the blunderbuss is much quicker and easier to reload than a lot of other muzzle loaders. And yet, this one at least delivers pretty respectable accuracy with a round ball, uh, and also reasonably good performance with both buckshot and birdshot, at moderate ranges of course. The trigger pull did come out a little bit stiff, but when it breaks, it breaks like a glass rod. Uh, very crisp trigger pull, even if it is a little bit stiff. Of course, firing a 600 and some grain lead round ball at supersonic velocities, uh, this blunderbuss certainly packs a punch, and yet the recoil remains manageable. Uh, I would say it's definitely no worse than shooting a 12-gauge shotgun, for example. Anyway, I think that concludes this project and this video, so thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.